Great. Live, okay. Phenomenal. Great. So we're live. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining um, this um, this uh, hangout. <laughs> um, and so why don't we uh, go around and introduce ourselves? So just like say who you are, where you're from, and what you're passionate about. Okay. So uh, Kartik, do you want to go first? Sure. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Kartik Kumar. I'm from India. I actually work at Google India. I'm passionate about traveling. I love to travel. In fact, next two days I'll be off on a surfing camp uh, for the next five days. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I managed again to mispronounce your name. Yeah, me. <laughs> I'll get it right uh, by the end of this hangout. Uh, Larry, do you want to go next? Sure. My name is Larry Jacobson. Uh, I'm originally from the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, live up in Central Oregon, high desert, and I'm passionate about uh, front-end innovation and product development. Wonderful. Um, so um, let's go to Liz. Liz. Hello. I'm Liz Thebe. I'm originally from Massachusetts, Boston, but I currently live in England, in the in the Midlands, in the West Midlands. Mm -hmm. So what am I passionate about? Well, I'm passionate about healthcare and um, access for all. And so working for the National Health Service, which is what I do in England, uh, has helped sort of satisfy that passion, if you will. And I'm also passionate about running, and I run marathons. Cool. Uh, very, very, healthcare for all is a very, very needed thing. Um, let's go to Pete. Pete. Hi, my name is uh, Pete Vigen, and I am an experience uh, designer here at ESI Design. And so I'm passionate about game design and design for kids and design in public spaces and how to integrate uh, technology into public spaces to create moments of conversation and interest and delight. So Cool. Thank you so much. And we'll go back to Pete later on in this hangout because he has been doing some, some uh, we have been doing together some experiments uh, uh, in the class uh, that have to do with uh, games and playing and as Pete said, how you use that to start conversations and as a learning tool as well. So we'll get back to that. Uh, Richard, um, tell us about you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Richard Inlow. I live in San Francisco. I am the design co-founder of my own consultancy firm, where I help early stage startups turn ideas into web apps and, and uh, mobile apps. And um, I would say I'm most passionate about uh, discovery and learning. Um, in addition to doing the D-School course, I'm also going to a general assembly course learning front-end web development mm -hmm. and doing so much. <laughs> a lot of tutorials and a lot of things just because I, I get interested in a subject and I just want to learn so much about that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a good course. Yeah, isn't it amazing how much access we have right now or, or the, the, some, the fortunate part of the world has a lot of access to a lot of information and courses, right? Yeah. And it's a way to, to, that everyone has access to, to learning tools and right to to find a way to make their lives better and and that would be wonderful if that it, it was the whole world. Um, yeah. Sarah, do you want to to tell us about yourself? Sure, I'm Sarah Curtis. I'm an industrial organizational psychologist and I work in the field of leader development. So professionally, I am passionate about continued individual growth. And personally, I am passionate about West Coast swing dancing, even though I live on the East Coast. So <laughs> if I ever make it out to Stanford, I will find some dancing. Yeah, come to the West Coast. <laughs> um, Let me, I'm going to try and show you guys. Uh, I don't know if you can see anything, but like, you know, that's out of our window, uh, one of our buildings. It's really nice out there. <laughs> I would love to come. Um, Sumitra, do you want to tell us about you? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm a banker, a trainer, and a quality professional. What I'm passionate about is um, similar to what Liz said, healthcare accessibility, especially in the remote areas, and that is exactly what I've been working on these last few years. It's a mobile hospital facility, and uh, I'm from Mumbai, India, so it's like managing it remote as well as going there. What I'm hoping to get out of this course is um, 
best ways to improve the process and hopefully bring about a health innovation. Great to be on this course. Thank you. Great. Thank you for, for being part of the community. And I'm going to point to someone else who's here by my side uh, because, you know, Hi. a lot of people, you know, are, you know, perhaps not so visible, but like are key um, elements of or key people in the in this course. And this is one of them. This is Lori. Hi. Lori. Nice to meet you all. Hello, yeah, Lori. Tell us who you I'm are. Lori. I'm the communication specialist for Epicenter, and I work very closely with Leticia on this class, and she's been a phenomenal friend and educator. I'm excited to be working with Thank you. <laughs> I, I wanted to know about you. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so um, here's what I was thinking. And thank you, everyone, for taking the time, some of you late at night, um, to, to do this um, and, and join us in, the, in this call. And I, I was thinking we could, at the beginning, talk about the challenge. And the first part, the empathy uh, and the defining a problem and how, how that went for you. Um, what worked, what didn't work, what um, you know, advice you would give others, what questions you have, uh, and then we'll move on to what what is um, coming this week, which is ideation, and it's kind of like moving from the problem space to the solution space, um, and what are you know um, things that you have um, that are in your mind regarding ideation, and, and talk about strategies uh, for that. So does does that sound like a good plan? Yep, sure. Yeah, sure. Cool. And and I, I should uh, say that uh, my one of my goals for this call is to talk less. So starting now, uh, I want you guys to do most of the talking. Uh, so uh, does anyone want to start telling us about your experience with the challenge? Sumitra raised her hand. Very <laughs> Go ahead, Sumitra. Okay, I think one of the big learnings for me during the interview process is uh, or was to listen, listen, listen. Oftentimes I would love to interrupt and try to uh, give my own words into the interviewer's mouth and I had to hold myself back. And I think one thing I gained by just listening, listening, and even more listening was that I could actually observe so much about things like body language um, or, or you know, hidden nuances uh, go behind what was actually being said. And the next thing I think I could do uh, effectively was use probing questions because I was listening. So I think these were my two big learnings from the interview process. Great. Anyone else? Any reactions? Your experiences? Go ahead. So, you know, I, I want to talk about my experience. Um, I, I learned quite a bit throughout this whole experience, but I, I think what I learned even before the interview started was um, who to interview. And um, initially, I, I, I know somebody who is a founder and activist of this uh, organization who's trying to change the way school works. So I thought, oh, he would be the perfect person to interview. Um, after putting together some questions and thinking about it, I started thinking maybe that the interview would be very filled with rhetoric. So I brought that to my learning team and just kind of got their opinion on that. And they were all really supportive. And they said, well, as a juxtaposition, maybe you can interview somebody who is a lifetime academic whose life is all about school. So um, it, it taught me a lot, just even before I even started the interview. Great. Great. Anyone else wants to... Share? Could I jump in? I don't, don't know how to signal that I want to say something. So sure. Yeah. Let's let's just raise our hands, or <laughs> perhaps we can invent. If anyone wants to invent some other signal, we can invent our own signal. Right? <laughs> so, so here's my signal. Um, I think one of the challenges that I found, um, and I'd be really interested in hearing others' perspective on this, was how to keep my own bias out of the interview. So the first person I interviewed um, really wanted to go off on this tangent. And the tangent was to describe in lots of detail the challenges of having students that were not polite in the classroom. So he went off on this tangent. And I had a couple of semi-structured questions that I kept pulling him back to. And I was aware of the balance and sort of the tension between turning him off and getting the most from him at the same time trying to complete this this process and so I'd be interested in 
hearing what others think of that tension or that balance and if they experienced it. Anyone wants to jump in on that? And yeah. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so one, one thing that first I would like to kind of build upon what Sumitra said is that it's important to actually uh, let them speak. So what I actually did was uh, I asked them questions like, what, how is your day in the life like? So we just got about more stories from from them. So it actually perhaps helped get some better insights. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do I actually get them on 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 a particular track and not go way off tangent is basically keep getting back and ask ask relevant question, pointed questions, and ask them. All right, that's great. That's that's what I did at least. That. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Say that okay, that's a wonderful story, a wonderful point. But how about and and you ask them, bring them back again to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that's the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, and any other strategies, Sarah? Go ahead. Yeah, I think um, one thing I'm I'm learning is that when people go off on tangents and sometimes kind of feel what you are talking about things that you feel are irrelevant or off topic and you want to steer them back to the conversation, it uh, it's worth asking them why they feel like that's important because um, we complain about things or we're, we want to talk about things because we're, there's some value underneath it. And if you can ask people the questions, even if you feel like it's off topic, you're going to learn something about what they hold as important in life. So if it's about students who are being rude in the classroom. Like, why does that really matter? Why does it matter if students are being rude? Um, and using that as an opportunity to learn more. And then eventually, if you need to steer them back to something else, you can. But just going with where where they're going, I think, can pro provide you insights. And for me, I, my friend that I talked to kind of did that and it ended up being the, the path that we went down was where I found the most valuable need that she had, but it wasn't related to what I was asking her about originally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think building on that, I think that's really important to think that sometimes the things that people say might not be even like real, but it just tells you something about what, how they see the world, right? And asking why and challenging them, challenging them in a good way to, to go deeper and to explain more and not just assume that if they say, you know, it's oh, it's not cool that students are ruling class, and you say, yeah, yeah, I agree. No, tell me more. Tell me why. Tell me what does it mean for you that students are rude, right? And challenge the assumptions that we use the same meaning for the same words. You know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. um, and any other um, um, strategies or any other experiences with how to, you know, keep your own biases in, in, the, in the interview? Yeah, Leticia? Yes, go oh, Larry. Um, I, I took kind of a, a business model canvas approach. Um, so I spent very little time on uh, like asking the questions and most of the time in a posted note format, trying to get as many data points as possible um, so that I had kind of a really good spread of like an answers to their questions. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that I found from that was um, I also had a part two to my interviews where then I asked more extensive questions um, that really brought out more more and more of their personality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point that sometimes it's, it's good if, if you have the ability to go back to reflect on the, on, the, on the interview and then go back and ask follow up questions, that's great. Sometimes you don't have that uh, ability and that's totally fine. Uh, you know, you can, you will learn a lot about, uh, you know, the other questions, even as you move into generating solutions and prototypes, right? And as we'll see when we move to prototyping, testing your prototype is kind of like an extension of an interview. It's kind of like an interview with some solution that is a, a conversation starter. If you if, I, if that's clear. But that will, if not, that will become clear um, later on when we talk about prototyping. Um, yeah, go, go ahead, Larry. Well, and I was just going to add to that that um, 
part of the interview process was really you are drawn in by their story so much. And like you really want to um, get out as much as possible, you know, in this format. And it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that um, um, just showing that you care and that you're listening goes a long, uh, like a long way towards getting people to open up and really tell you things that they wouldn't otherwise, right? So um, that's why um, I suggested at the beginning, do not, like, do, do not have a questionnaire and check you know, all your questions, but just like have a sense of what types of things you want to explore, but just listen and follow up and ask lots of why questions and ask for stories. And, and that's, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, right, the story, the, the story keeps evolving. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Your your questioning all of a sudden becomes uh, they're kind of they're obviously driving it and the questions keep on progressing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else wants to share any other aspect of the interview that they they find might be a good learning for others um, to hear about? Yes, Richard, go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Um, a, it, it challenged the way I thought about interviews. Like you were saying, don't have a list of questions, but I came into it totally prepared. Okay, I'm going to ask this, 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 and this. And then when I sat down with the person I was interviewing, I, I, as soon as the first question happened, it completely went off script. Um, it was an evolving story. I was like, telling me more about this, whys and hows. I was asking a lot of really open-ended questions. So um, it was definitely a challenge to me in thinking about how I would how I thought about this process. Great, great. Sarah, did you want to add something to that? Or something yeah, <laughs> just one thing I noticed in my, um, with myself, I was trying to monitor myself as I was doing it, was how hard it is not to try to solve the problem during the empathy interview. Because she's talking about all these things that are hard for her, and especially because it was my friend, I wanted to help. <laughs> and I know that we'll get to that eventually, but it was really hard for me not to, even in my mind, when she says something, think, ooh, that's where I want to go because there's a good solution there. Mm -hmm. So, like, really just listening with suspension of all <laughs> desire to problem solve is so hard. And every, every person I've done design thinking work with, they just want to solve the problems. And it's so hard to get people to turn that off. And so I didn't know if you had any, if anybody has any advice on how to suspend that natural tendency in so many of us, especially people who are, you know, scientists or engineers who just live in the world of solving problems. Mm -hmm. Any any answers to, the, to Sarah? I, I think it was great to uh, go back to the group and, like, I didn't have any, uh, I didn't have a real answer to uh, necessarily what the problem was without um, really looking at the looking at all the aspects of it and I thought it was great to go back in a group format and talk about um, you know just the experience and, and and kind of sharing some commonality between you know between each person mm -hmm. so Larry when you talk about going back to a group um, what are you referring to a learning squad correct the learning squad yes and so that that has helped you kind of like have that format because this was an experiment in, you know, everyone is doing their own individual work. Correct. I everyone to experience doing the work, uh, but I wanted uh, to people to have a support. So has, how, how has that worked for, so evidently you mentioned this has worked for you. Um, what is the experience of others with the learning squads? Do, do all of you have one? Um, anyone yes. There? Yes. Raise your hand if you want to share anything about your experience with your learning squad. It can be a negative experience, something to improve. Uh, Pratik, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so one of my experiences was that we are a very kind of diverse group for people from different locations, different backgrounds. And it's always a very good thing to see how they work, with the way they approach problem solving and that's that was really good and we are actually able to actually kind of re interact more with them so we actually learn more mm -hmm. that's great a anyone else yes please go ahead um, what's, what's interesting with my learning squad and we're just a very small group of four um, is that we 
quickly wanted to go into the, our, the problem that brought us together that we'd like to solve that has nothing to do with work and school transition, but it has to do with health care. We quickly wanted to apply the, the, the approach to that, and so we're coming up now with some semi-structured interview questions to go ahead and, and start doing that. So um, it, it really has fast-tracked and, and applied very quickly what we learned with the exercise that you created for us um, and allowed us to, to move into thinking about it um, in a topic that's, that's more relevant to what, we, what we're doing. Great. Um, I want to, to hear from any of and all of you, what did you think about the topic of the challenge? Uh, when you first heard about it, what, were, what was your reaction as you delved into it? What was your, your reaction? How did that change or didn't change? Any, any perspectives on that? So, you know, um, my pers I, it's a very interesting challenge, especially coming from a course like this, because it, it plays a whole role in this transition from work to school and kind of contributing to kind of innovating in the whole school system. Um, I wasn't really aware of all of the challenges that were out there until I had my interview. And then after the interview, I, my mind was filled with all of these great different ideas to do. So I think the most exciting part, aside from the interview, of course, is just taking everything that was say, said and just thinking of different ways, like ideas and ideating. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to this next challenge as well. Mm -hmm. And any other? Yes, Liz. Um, so I thought it was a very um, a useful topic, and, and it was broad enough to um, en encompass lots of different ways of thinking about it. And as I went online to look at what other students have done with their prezies or their um, PowerPoints or whatever, it occurred to me that it was such a wonderful topic that allowed for this huge, diverse kind of approach. Um, and, and so for that, I'm, I'm very appreciative. Yeah, and I think it's going to be really interesting to really see what others have seen from the point of view of different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of this, even when going away from the topic and thinking about the process itself, right, um, I think it's very valuable that, you know, let's say you did a, an interview and you did an empathy map and a problem statement, and then you see the, the work of others and you realize, well, you know, I could have done it a little bit better, I could have put more content in it, right? The learning is there, right, in, in seeing that. So it's not that, oh, you know, I submitted something that was not good enough. It's not about, that's not the ending point. It's the process of learning. How would you do it better the next time, right? So I just want everyone to appreciate that. And, and when you use the rubrics um, and, and evaluate the work of others, take that into account. We're all growing and learning together, so it's not important that you know this particular assignment that you submitted is perfect. That's not the point, right? Actually, even the the I don't know one that is really really good could always be better, right? So how can you push yourself to be better? And of course, there's a level of subjectivity. Um, I I'm, I want to ask. Has any of you done any peer re review already? I know it's been only active, that, that possibility has only been active for some hours, but have you looked at the rubrics? Can, can, does anyone have a comment on that? So, uh, Sumitra, do you want to comment on that? Um, yes, so I started the peer evaluations today, and uh, I thought one way uh, for it to be really effective for me was to open up one tab with the criteria and rubrics so that I know what I'm evaluating because there's a whole host of things, and then keep the submission open on one tab. So yeah. then I would go back and forth. Like, let's say I was doing say and do, and then there is four grade options, and all you have to do is, of course, just slide it. But then each of the four have different, um, you know, criteria. So I think keeping the tab open was a yeah. very useful tactic for me. Yeah, yeah, and I agree that, you know, that could be incorporated in the future in the platform so that you can see both things at the same time and you don't have to, um, you know, uh, open and close and have two tabs. The same is true, and I, I want to say, when you're doing the assignment, sometimes when you hit on create, uh, no, when you hit on create a new submission, you no longer see the instructions for the assignment, right? 
So you might forget important things. So I think your strategy of opening in a, another tab for the preview also applies to the assignment. So when you're creating your assignment, make sure that you have the instructions for the assignment open somewhere in another page so that you, you um, are submitting everything that is being asked. Make sense? Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, so I have a question. Please go ahead. Um, and I may have missed it, but was the rubric posted before the assignment was due? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes, it was. And I made a conscious decision not to advertise it. And let me explain why. Um, I wanted people to focus on going out and doing the assignment, as opposed to thinking about how am I going to be evaluated and stressing about that, OK? So that's why I didn't mention the rubric you know, when the assignment was released. It was a very conscious decision. I just wanted people to focus on going out and doing. And even if you are doing something wrong, and then you realize it when you actually start evaluating, that's when the learning happens, right? If I give you the rubric, first, there's a, a, always a consideration of um, overload um, of information, right? Um, when you say, you know, the assignment, the, the lecture is up, and this is the assignment, there's so much information that if I added on top of that, that would be already too much information. But on the most important aspect of it is I just wanted people to go out and do before thinking, how am I going to be evaluated? Because the evaluation is really part of the learning process. Make sense? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah? Yes. Great. Um, so any other um, um, comments about the, the peer review um, process? Any questions? I like the fact that there was um, an expert uh, review as well so that you reviewed and that there was also a second review that kind of like said, okay, you're on track too with your thinking. Great. So, and as, as you went through these reviews, it, it, was, uh, it was nice to have that. Great, great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that worked. Um, and yes, and, and, we, and in me reviewing uh, all the, those uh, assignments to create those um, sample reviews, it was a lot of learning for me, right? And how people interpreted the different instructions, things like that, that will make me be better next time I frame certain things. So that was also a learning experience for me. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for participating in the, in the peer review process. And, and because you will learn a lot, and, and others will learn a lot from the feedback that you provide. Um, cool. So uh, we're kind of like halfway through, perhaps if, uh, unless anyone has any other burning comment or question about the empathy and the fine um, phase and the interviewing, perhaps we can move to ideation now. Does that sound good? Or like we're happy to you know, take some other comments on um, empathy and define. Or should we jump to ideate? Yeah? Let's so. jump. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> cool. OK. So as you know, this week we are continuing the challenge. And now you have defined the problem. And we're now going into the solution space. And one thing that, um, and again, I'm kind of like talking too much. I'll shut up in a second. Uh, but uh, uh, in, in, in the, if you think about the design process, you can think of moments where you are narrowing and moments where you're, you're flaring or opening up, right? And this moment, uh, we, we started in a very broad sense with a very broad challenge. And then we narrowed down to a more specific problem through the lens of one stakeholder, OK? So we were narrowing. Now we're opening up again. And so we are going to go into thinking about solutions, but it's not about thinking about one solution, which is a tendency that we all have. What is the, the first right answer to a problem, right? We're going to like open, expand the possibilities and think, what are many, 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 many ways of solving this problem? And then we're going to choose some, and then we're going to move forward with some of those solutions. Does that framework make sense? Yes. Yeah? Cool. Um, and so I want to um, take um, this moment to introduce uh, Pete, 
and uh, introduce something that we're doing as a kind of like as a side uh, project, let's say, in, inside the platform that has a lot to do with ideation, but also has to, a lot to do with other of the topics, uh, but that has to do with playfulness. And perhaps, Pete, do you want to talk about what, who the mysterious visitor is and who, who are you? Oh, it froze. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh, no. But, yeah, uh, it froze. Okay, there you go. What, what happened uh, was that um, I, I do a lot of work in live action game design um, and am a designer, so I, I actually know a lot and deal with a lot of uh, the subjects and topics that uh, this class is about on a day-to-day -day basis. And so um, we have a, a small group of uh, folks um, that are interested in figuring out ways of using live-action games to uh, enhance the innovation uh, teaching at a college level. And so figuring out how to teach engineers and designers and, and just anyone else how to think differently um, by using playful uh, challenges and ideas and uh, fun things. And so um, Leticia came to me with the challenge of creating uh, games for a MOOC um, in a very short amount of time. And so uh, that's kind of where the mysterious visitor came from. And so far I've learned a lot about how to do it and I have a, a whole bunch of desires that, that kind of went outside of the technical realm um, that I'll, I'll write up when we're, we're done with the class. I don't want to give any spoilers or anything like that. But I'm, the, if you guys participate, that's awesome. Um, and, uh, and any feedback, uh, if you message me or Leticia, is always great. But uh, just know that this is the first iteration trying to figure out how to take something that uh, works in the real world um, to a certain extent and that has some unexplored uh, areas in the real world as well um, and trying to apply that to an online audience which is uh, quite the challenge so, mm -hmm. so but we, know we have a, a, a player here right Sumitra you have yes played, you have played with the mysterious visitor yes. how did like explain to others I mean for, first let's do a show of hands who had noticed the mysterious visitor in the forum. Uh, wait, Larry, yes, everyone, please no. So, okay, I mean, almost everyone had noticed it, right? Uh, and we have Sumitra, who had played, who played apart from Sumitra, who we know played. And it's okay if you say no. Anyone else played? No? It's fine. But now let's hear about Sumitra and... Tell us about it. Why, why were you drawn to it? What, what was the mysterious visitor? Explain to others. Um, you know, let me just step a little back okay. as to the reason why I played. Is that okay. uh, in, in days when I used to train, we used to use icebreakers to sort of break the monotony of boring lectures in banking. And I found that uh, the participants used to be the most engaged during the icebreakers. And I was remembering those days, and I said that, OK, design thinking is great, and I'm enjoying it, but I want to keep sustaining my interest. So maybe this is a chance for me to uh, kind of do the icebreaker. And that's the reason why I played, because I thought it was an icebreaker. I'm not sure if I'm using a correct metaphor here but but that that's why I started and so when I look back on the first one was I think a picture of the room and I wasn't at home I was traveling in Hong Kong but then that's the beauty of an online course you can be anywhere so I remember taking a picture of the service apartment there and thinking about what the alien would do uh, so that's where I started and then uh, the next one was a simple process and I'm thinking to myself what would be a simple process and I was actually washing my hands um, uh, to cook something and then I read that and I said okay let me just go with hand washing and there were so many learnings actually though I went into it with the point of view of ice breaking if I come back to that metaphor I think I learned some like I realized that even a simple process 
uh, I don't know if this is an unintended consequence of the game, but even a simple process can be broken down into steps. And um, you know, I learned uh, that uh, so in in daily life as well. You, if you apply those routine steps again and again, you perfect yourself. And then now I know there's one which I just read before logging in. It's about aliens and rotary phones and I haven't been able to ice break into that yet but I promise I will. <laughs> yes. So without giving any spoilers and, and Pete like you know feel free to say shut up don't say anymore but uh, I just want to say the, this is a forum so if you go to the forum you'll see a forum that is called the mysterious visitor and it has three chapters and it actually is it's like a novel it's a narrative right and then mm -hmm. for me, let me explain why uh, I wanted to bring this and, and I had the, the, the fortune to that, that Pete accepted my challenge uh, and, and, and we started doing this. Um, I think uh, first that uh, storytelling is a great way to engage people and that's, and that's why the, this format that the, the, this form has is different than the others in a little bit. Uh, but also because playfulness for me is important, um, not only for ideation, but in general in learning, right? We have to be a little bit more playful and not think that um, if we're not being serious and, you know, rigorous, we are not learning, right? We can be playful and learn a lot, right? And a lot of the things that we do in class here uh, at the D school, as, as Sumitra said, we always start the class with a warm-up activity, something uh, short uh, but active that gets people in the right mindset, okay? And then we start, and, and the whole class is experiential, but we always want to start with something that gets people uh, moving and out of their uh, comfort zone, right? Um, so uh, I wanted this class to have that element of playfulness in many different ways, but this was a, a very an explicit way of doing that. Uh, Pete, do you want to add something to that or correct me or say, you know? No, that's, I, I do want to add something, but I think everything you said sounds great. Um, basically, the, uh, the, the story kind of came out of necessity a little bit um, because uh, I was trying to think about how to do this online, and if I was in a class and doing it with a group, I would be kind of adding a pitch, as I call it, um, in order to set the context. And um, what I wanted to do is figure out all of these um, games or challenges around uh, the the topics that would reinforce some of the design thinking uh, aspects that I have to do. And uh, and so there is a little kind of selfishness into it. I do like the idea of them being icebreakers on one side, but I, I do also think that, yeah, there is learning there. You know, um, I think when you're looking at um, a room, uh, trying to envision that room as, look at it like an amateur and, and try to notice things that you wouldn't necessarily notice and trying to defy kind of all of the uh, preconceived notions that, that you bring to that story, um, it is a really great way to start thinking like a designer and um, then trying to explain something to someone uh, step by step is, is another really interesting thing. We do this game all the time where uh, we have a, a, a bag of uh, sliced bread and a thing of peanut butter and a knife and we tell someone to tell us how to make a peanut butter sandwich and the first thing they say is well you take two two slices of bread, and so my friend Brian rips open the, the bag, and all the bread flies all over the place, and he picks up two pieces off the ground. And everyone says, well, no, that's not what I told you to do. He says, he says exactly what you told me to do. Um, uh, the other thing, just to, to think about gaming or, or kind of trying to find some levity in this, is that the context of the world uh, and, and you know, contemporary life is that people have uh, people seek out delight, and if you're not giving it to them, they are going to find it anyway because they have a little electronic thing attached to them at any time that gives them little bits of delight in their life. <laughs> and so, um, so trying to uh, 
think of things out of trying to design something without thinking of the context that people are going to be bored with what you're giving them otherwise uh, is uh, I think that throwing in fun is essential and throwing in the idea that in contemporary life uh, we have so many options uh, and that as a designer not considering how to make something fun and playful and having uh, to think that your users or your participants or the people who experience what you're doing are also going to seek ways of making it fun um, is naive because you know uh, things that were the most boring in my childhood uh, my brother and I and brothers and I uh, found ways of making them fun um, so uh, so either you control the fun or you let your users control the fun um, and in general design in a lot of ways is either about control or about uh, of being aware of what you don't control. Cool. So. And I, I want to, um, I, I'll leave the floor to someone else, but I just wanted to um, amend something I said. I said, like, you know, if you're not, like, uh, boring and uh, serious and rigorous, I think you can be rigorously playful. I truly think that you can be rigorously playful. There's not, you know, one or the other. So, and that's how I approach my teaching. I think, you know, I can I learn a lot while having fun. Uh, so that's how I, I want to create this experience for everyone uh, and with the help of, of many others like you. Um, so anyone has any comments or um, reactions to, to this, this topic, these comments? Yes, Liz. Um, this is actually a, a question for Pete. I'm, I'm curious to know how you're going to measure the impact of this mystery thing that you've created. Um, how are you going to know that it's as good as you want it to be or it's made a difference? How, what, what are you going to use to do that? Uh, well, we have, we have a couple of tactics right now, um, mainly through surveying and participatory uh, metrics and understanding kind of how many people look at it versus how many people uh, take action versus how many people come back and things like that. Um, so, so, and that's part of it, um, but this is one small slice of a, a much bigger project that we're working on which has analytics as part of the entire project. And as mm -hmm. I said, you know, this was a little, a little bit last minute, we'll say, <laughs> as far as the, the construction of, of how we put it all together. And so, um, ideally, uh, what I'm going to be able to do at the end of this is propose a technological solution that allows for a greater level of engagement uh, and integration into the platform uh, that would allow for more kind of uh, fun to be integrated into it and then have uh, your participation in things like this be a little more visible. Like right now, I'm, you know, I have these kind of alien badges that my friend Brian is uh, trying to message out to people. Some people think Brian is an alien. Uh, he may be, I don't know. I don't know, it might be a spoiler, I'm not sure. I think he is. <laughs> I want a badge, I want a badge. But I, I've seen people with badges, uh, Pete. At least one person I saw that very, you know, in their profile having the alien badge, so that was, there, that was fun. But yes. There's a little bit of technical uh, maneuvering in order to get that to work, so. Uh, that things like that will be a little better in the future. And so just to answer your question, Liz, and, and, you know, it, it is a very, very uh, crucial question in, in contemporary life because, and I was just talking to someone about this yesterday, which is that um, when, we have, um, when we have a website, uh, we, we know everything about that website. We have analytics on that website. And you better believe a, a group like Amazon, they know if they move a button over one pixel, the kind of impact that that has on the entire site and on their user base. And the idea that us as educators or designers or as, as any uh, profession where you're going to design something intelligently in the 21st century, that you're not gathering analytics on how your users are participating and how they're interacting with a complex system, um, if you're not getting that data and learning from it and evolving, that design, then it's unethical. I mean, and then it won't last. It won't work. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and that's just one of the the wonders of technology is we are able to gather all of that those analytics and um, and kind of create profiles on how people use stuff and then experiment and ideate. Mm -hmm. so. 
And I would add to that, building on that, that in general, right, how do we measure the effect of this whole course, right? And there's some things that we can measure, and some things are more difficult, but are more interesting to measure, right? And someone said, you know, not everything that can be measured is interesting, and not everything that is interesting can be measured, right? And sometimes we're kind of like just saying at the level of like, this is what we're, we can measure, and we forget about other things that might be more challenging, but we should strive to, we should not stop doing some things because there are no easy ways to measure them. So, and we, and that will get better, right? That, that's the process, but, uh, yeah. Um, so, and I, I have a, another challenge for Pete, and, and you don't have to um, respond it right now, although you could, right? But what would be a game that could be played uh, in a Hangout? something that we could play. We wanted to play a game right now, you know, the how many of us, eight of us, what could we do? Any ideas? Well, I, I, you know, I would be much more interested in playing a game uh, where we were, uh, where the people, the silent partners in, in our relationship right now, the people who are on the, the YouTube stream commenting or who are watching, mm -hmm. I would be much more interested in them being the players and us being the uh, the uh, the pieces, as it were, and so I would just think about it more in terms of doing something where we were uh, uh, to, to tell a lie or something like that, where we all are, are telling something and uh, they have to try to suss out who the liar is. I think that Let's that's try. kind of interesting. Should we and try? Should we <laughs> try <laughs> we have the comments. We're seeing the comments. Uh, Lori has here the comments. If everyone, the only issue, and this is not relevant, like this is sort of relevant, that there's a delay between the, the, the live stream and ours. It's like, I think, 20 seconds when we measured it. But uh, um, if anyone wants to, I mean, we could say, so how would, well, how would, how would that work? Like, we, we should all say something that is a lie. And well, no. So we do. We have is our group chat on the right here. Is that broadcast? We have uh, no. I don't think it shows on. So the, if I type, if I type someone's name in there, okay. and I'm not a player in this, Let's and I'm going to type someone's name, and we're all we're all going to say one thing about ourselves. Okay. And uh, the person whose name I type is going to say something that is incorrect, that okay. is false. That is They're false. They're going to, right. to lie. Cool. Let's and, try. Yep. The, the job of the people watching is to uh, figure out which one of us, not including me, is the liar. Okay, so. cool. The game master, go. So he has revealed a name which we will not name. Uh, and right. we all, so let's, and what is the question? We, ha we just have to say something about ourselves? Uh, tell, tell me the last place that you went on vacation. The last place I went on vacation. Okay, uh, let's give like five seconds to think. Last place you gave on vacation, you know who you're saying something that is not true, okay? And we have some players here. I'm, we're seeing the comments here. We have some players saying, I want to play, okay? So are we ready? Yeah? Cool. Let's start. I'm going to start with Sumitra. Sumitra, what was the last place you went on vacation? Singapore. Singapore, okay. What about Sarah? Miami. Miami. What about Richard? I went to Amsterdam. Richard went to Amsterdam. Pete is not playing. Pete, you're not playing, right? You're just supervising mm -hmm. kids. Uh, Liz, where, where did you go on vacation last? Uh, I went to Lisbon. Lisbon, OK. Um, I went to uh, Uruguay. Uh, Larry? I went to Berlin. Berlin. And Kartik? I went to SF. At San Francisco? San Francisco. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, let's say, uh, oh, someone is saying, I don't know the names. Okay, but uh, let's say. If oh, no, they don't have the, the names of everyone. So. They don't have the names of everyone. Just, so. say, just say the number. Of, what yeah, number they are. you can That's say, right. if you're on the, uh, on the live stream, you can say the, you know, the second person from the left or something. Is right. the, person who lied. And for us, we should think of a question that is has a little bit, so it's not a place, but it has something, I don't know, how do we make it so it's, um, so it's less, uh, it's, 
I don't know how to phrase this. So it's um, more difficult to know the truth from the lie. You know what I mean? Perhaps uh, the the audience can ask a question about the last place you went to vacation. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Cool. Let's see. If we get some. Uh, we're not again. We have like a twenty second delay. But you know, the the point is, you know, there's there's a lot of of of, uh, of um of things to think about when you translate, you know, things that you do uh, live, face-to-face, uh, -to, -face, to a medium such as a chat or an online class, right? Um, so for me, it has been an experiment of how do, I how do I take my teaching, which is just like we're doing an experiment. I'm setting up an, an, an experience, and we're all doing something that has the point of getting you to ask Questions. Create your own questions about, for instance, what are the best conditions to be creative, uh, and then you know we all reflect together. And then if you want to go out and read and learn more and read research papers, you do that, right? So how do you create that uh, sequence on an online class? Okay, so we are actually some some people uh, on the live stream are actually taking the game further and are <laughs> asking questions. So they're asking like. So, oh, what did you do in Berlin, uh, Sarah? What did you do in Miami? <laughs> uh, right? Uh, someone is saying that the first person on the left, meaning Kartik, is the liar. Uh, let's, <laughs> uh, let's leave some suspense there. But uh, yeah, yeah. So another person, a second person, thinks Kartik is the liar. Hmm. I wonder what's about him. But, uh, you, uh, yeah, but uh, some other people are, are asking what was your favorite food in Singapore. Who was it that went to Singapore, uh, allegedly? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite food in Singapore? Uh, noodles. 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 There you go, your, your answer. Cool. So, uh, so I think that, you know, based on the, the, the number of votes, uh, Karthik was the, the liar, but uh, do, do we want to reveal, Pete, do we want to, to reveal the, who the liar is? I think, you know, one of the things I think is interesting, even probably without, maybe uh, maybe those people now have to go and they have to justify why, why they thought what they thought. Nice. I think that might be interesting. Cool. Um, but, but you're right, you know, like in, in a future thing, what you should try is, uh, having more questions or interaction with that audience, it, which in general I think would, is interesting in, in prompting them. Um, yeah. Because what I'm interested in watching all your little heads on the bottom and how you laugh or react to things. And so that's my, my guess is that, uh, you know, Kurt, Kurt he, uh probably looked a certain way or something when he, when he said <laughs> what he said. I'm not going to reveal if he's the liar or not, but I would really like to know uh, if people have other guesses or if the mm -hmm. folks on here, if you guys could uh, take, you know, your answers and questions and answers to the forum, um, and and yeah. see if you could defend yourself in on the forum of, on yeah. your last visited place. So. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> using are, Wikipedia, I guess, right? <laughs> people are saying that Kartik actually um, gives it away by laughing all the time. Oh, <laughs> but they think. But uh, we, we, we don't have to reveal yet who was the liar, but uh, this is a good point. This was our prototype, you know, we created in real time of like how do we make a call like this more interactive by bringing the audience who's like doing the live stream, right? And how do we extend that and connect it to the, the course, through the forum? So, um, and, and we learned a lot just by doing this, right? And perhaps the game was not particularly, you know, I don't know, uh, I don't know, enlightening or connected to any specific topic, but we just learned a lot about what we could and do better um, uh, just by doing, right? So learning by doing. Um, yeah. So great. Uh, thank you so much for for uh, for, for playing. Um, and so any any thoughts about uh, this week and generating ideas and. Uh, how do you guys feel about that? And have you looked at the lectures? Have the have have those helped? Um, kind of like getting you in the mindset of you know uh, projecting your imagination and thinking about ideas. Any thoughts? 
I have kind of a question. Um, so, like everybody, probably everybody, I'm 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 a busy professional. I work like eight to twelve hour days, Monday through Friday. So, I just want to know from the rest of the team: How do you stay engaged? How do you find the time to do the projects? I'm um, I'm very committed to doing this, um, but I'm, I'm I'm finding that I'm not able to really get into the project until a Friday, and I'll have like the weekend to work on it. Is that the wrong way to approach it? Should I be taking it in all week? I, I mean, does anyone have any suggestions on on people who work a lot during their week? What do you guys think? Any I, thoughts? I think it's important to even if it's not a, a long period of time, to just spend a small amount of time every day. Okay. Just so you're constantly, you know, staying with the program and engaging. It doesn't mean you have to do everything. Just just take a small, you know, bite of it. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great idea, you know. Just, like, do five minutes, right? Right. Um, during lunch, right? Specific, especially here... This week that is about ideating and it's generating ideas, you can like run, uh, you have a running brainstorm, right? And you have, you, you keep a notebook and it's like, oh, here's another idea, just jot it down, right? And, you know, as you commute, I don't know, it, not, not if you're driving, though. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any other thoughts? Oh, Liz, think, and, yeah. uh, by the way, Liz, I'll give you the, the floor in a second. Pete needs to leave us. Uh, let's thank Pete for all his work and for being here. Thanks, thank Pete. you, thank thank you Pete. Pete. And thank you, Pete. Thank you for the forum. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. Um, so, Liz, tell us about you. What, what do you think? Well, I was going to add to, to Richard's question. I think, for me, the, the days that I can um, do exactly what was described, which is a little bit each day, um, it, it sort of sticks. Um, when I cram it all into Sunday, which is what I did the first time around, none of it stuck. Really, I had to go back and relearn it. So there's something about finding just the little bits of time that you can um, apply it every single day, I think, works. Mm -hmm. Karthi, go ahead. So, so one thing that I do is I actually have half an hour that's set aside mm -hmm. every day uh, at, at, a, at a very specific time. So I actually know that this particular time is actually for the, the course, mm -hmm. so it actually helps me. Kind of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being like sure and that have that time. That's great. Any other uh, strategies, suggestions? Um, here from the, I'm reading from the comments from the live stream that uh, some, uh, I don't really know the name, but it's saying, I have been keeping my move mindset right by forcing myself to interact with community. Monitors other words, interactions, even small words. Then block time for big push. Um, so that's that's a, a that's a good comment as well. Uh, another one: take a piece of paper with you everywhere, right? It's kind of that's a good thing. Kind of like stick a little piece of paper, a block, something, and keep thinking about it. And as, as Liz said, Liz has one there. It's blue. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as Liz said, I, I I think I for me that works. Also, I always have a, a, a notebook with me. When I don't have a notebook, I feel like um, um, some, I'm missing a piece of clothing or something. But uh, for me, it's like kind of like you keep some things in the back of your mind, and then you know you resurface them, and then you do a big push, having things that are in the uh, being stimulated and having things in the back of your mind also works well. Yeah. Um, there's another comment here. Taking some time early in the morning is a good strategy to do the projects or complete the lectures. And I think that varies. For me, the mornings are my, my most creative times. So I know that if I get out of bed and I go get in the car and drive, I'm wasting my most creative time. For others, it might be late at night, right? So as you'll see in one of the lectures of this week, it's about just finding what works for you and what moments work for you, right? Um, any any final comments? We have uh, one minute. Any final parting words, advice for others, whatever is on your mind? I, I would also say to, um, if you have a short period of time, to turn everything else off and just focus on that one thing completely and get rid of everything else that you're thinking about. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only for five minutes, right? Right. Cool. Okay, so we have uh, reached the end of the of the um, the chat, the hangout. I thank you all of you so so much for being here, for being such wonderful community members, sharing what your strategies, sharing what has worked and what hasn't worked. Um, and I'm sure this will be very valuable for everyone. How did I do with um, not talking all the time? <laughs> what grade do I get? You're great. You facilitated conversation. It was perfect. Great. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that, um, that it worked. Um, uh, so Lori's giving me an A. I'm going to strive for an A plus next time. No, it doesn't. Uh, I, just, I just enjoy so much talking to you all, and, um, and I'll see you around in the forums and whatnot. And good luck with this week. Okay? Thanks very Thanks. much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.